Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of The X Button. I am one of your co-hosts, Alejandro, and here is always my bearded Superman. Paul. How nice you doing, Paul? everybody. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Um, it has been a lovely day. It's extremely hot out here in New Orleans. Oh, and, it's, um, it's extremely hot also here in my undisclosed location. <laughs> you are in an undisclosed location that is also extremely hot, not the same place as me, unfortunately, but I'm glad that you're here. All right. Um, what are we talking about today, Alejandro? Uh, just quite a couple of things, because now that E3 and other stuff are coming up hot and soon, a lot of things are leaking or just being yeah. announced. Uh, just as a, hot. yeah, just as kind of like um, just some inside baseball. This episode, it's coming out the day after Memorial Day. However, we're recording it very early yes. so that we don't have to like spend a Memorial Day having to record or finding time if we're like on vacation or something. So some of the things that we're going to announce or talk about today may or may not be confirmed by the time this episode goes live or other things may break because who knows? Like I, it will yeah, also really. be... Reminded that we're recording this before a Far Cry 6 reveal. Mm. I think it's actually happening right now. So we may have something to say about it in the next episode if it's notable enough. But just for people to kind of know like when we're recording. So this is our first very early recording from the episodes that we've done. But we don't want to miss. Because here in the X button, we don't miss Tuesdays. We'll always remain on Tuesdays, <laughs> no matter what. So, so Paul, uh, before we go into the news, uh, big one, what have you been playing? I have been playing, um, thanks to a stroke of genius while you and I were playing some Destiny 2, I remembered that Republic Commando mm -hmm. had come out on PS4, and um, that is an extreme improvement to uh, the PC port, which I don't know if you tried to play the PC port of that game. Um, it's nearly unplayable for me. Yes, it is, <laughs> it's um, on Steam, yeah. Uh, just the cursor and the, the, the menu navigation is horrible um I, you cannot do it without bringing the sensitivity all the way down because the sensitivity ties into the menu and not just the gameplay and um you basically can't select anything <laughs> unless you are very specific with uh your movement and um it's been a, a great time i i realized that um shooters this is your, that era this is your book club game right the one that you said yes. that you were Good that uh, was, one of two actually <laughs> yeah um but uh yeah so to digress it's been an extremely fun process the squad gameplay i can see why it was such a big deal for its time um being able to order your troops i realized that there's not as much control as i thought with um commanding which trooper to go in which direction it's kind of a hey, whichever one it selects is going to go do the thing that you told them to. But if mm -hmm. that means that like your buddy who's about to die and then you tell a guy to go do a sniping position, you might tell your guy that's about to die to run over to the sniping position instead of just heal. Um, like I thought that I was going to try doing. Um, the battle droids, super battle droids are horrifying. <laughs> and um, there, there's a lot of that game that is just grungy and amazing at the same time so are you playing it on console right now are you still playing yes. the okay yeah just to just to be clear yeah. because you're mentioning the pc port also I, I, just yes. a, just a fun fact have you ever played halo 5 or um, you... i did but i never finished it actually so do you know the director of republic commando worked on halo 5 that is hilarious um, and you can see a lot of republic commando in halo 5 because you're always with a squad of four that's true you're like pointing them and all that obviously more improved because it's more mod a more modern shooter Mm -hmm. But it's so funny to see where the essence of those old Star Wars games can pop up somewhere. And I would say if there's anything that could be a spiritual successor to a Star Wars shooter, it would be Halo. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing that I played, uh, thanks to my love of the ending for Castlevania Season 4, was Symphony of the Night. Nice. I went back to that because I'd played Bloodstained since and I enjoyed that game a lot. I had some problems with it as we've discussed, but um, I wanted to go back and really just give it a solid try to mess with it. And um, I see why Bloodstained kept so much specific gameplay choices because of what made Symphony of the Night so special. And mm -hmm. I can only imagine playing that game in 97 when it came out 
there would be nothing like that with the RPG elements mixed with the 2D side scrolling platforming and action, all of the items and weapons that you can choose to build Alucard up, um, the move sets that you can change based on what weapon you're picking and all of the different little things like that. Um, it, it was amazing, honestly, um, just to see what they did and appreciate it for what it was. It still has a lot of quality of life problems <laughs> that oh, I yeah, struggle I with as a modern <laughs> person who didn't play that back in the day. And I don't have the nostalgia for it like some do. Um, but it, it makes me wish that Konami would get off their butts, um, stop sm sniffing their own farts mm -hmm. and actually put forth some effort on some of their old IPs instead of just going with the gotcha. Um, pachinko. Route, unfortunately. Yeah. The, yeah. the pachinko process. Oh my goodness. It just hurts my soul even harder to watch they have where they are. So many great franchises that are just like laying, yeah. laying dormant, like Contra, they kind of brought back in a very horrible game, like two years ago, Castlevania, because Castlevania has just been dead for a while. Like the last, like, the last time a Castlevania came out was Lords of Shadow 2 on 2014, and that was not a good game. Some people consider both of those games to be, and Mirrors, Mirrors of Fate, I think it was mm -hmm. called, the yeah. 3DS one. Yeah. Um, three. I th they said that the 3DS one was probably the closest return to form, but Lords of Shadow and Lords of Shadow 2. My first Castlevania game was Lords of Shadow. That's to give you an idea of like what I understood. And that one's good. Series. And it the was first decent. Lords of Shadow it, is pretty good. Um, it kind of made me think if I had to compare it to something else modern, it would be the um, Darksiders mm -hmm. series. Um, it made me kind of think of that. It actually reminded me more of God of War, like classic well, yeah, God of War and I mean, Dark Shadow of the Colossus in some parts. A, um, I would say Darksiders is like a reflection of God of War in like the PC, uh, P PS3 360 era. Um, kind of like have a spin-off almost rip off of it um the god of war at home so to speak yes <laughs> so anyway uh so yeah those were my two games that i really played that were new and besides that alejandro what have you been doing so I, i've continued playing the original mass effect i think i'm gonna pursue the platinum on the mass effect remastered because so uh, yeah because i'm just doing a lot that i didn't realize was there when you're like exploring the planets and all of that, because that game, now that I really think about it, if you mainline it, it's not that long. It really isn't like, hmm. it's actually pretty refreshing. Usually you assume RPGs are so long, but Mass Effect wasn't. Hmm. It's not short, but it's, it isn't hell long. And a lot of the side quests that I'm finding, I'm like, huh, why did I never try this before? But it was because the gameplay originally was so bad yeah like cmr that i didn't want to just explore i just kind of wanted to go through it because the story is still so good i'm like already in the end part of the game after doing a lot of the side stuff and it still stands out like the things that i had been mentioning that um the combat of that game retaining the essence of what the original felt but being so much tighter just makes it so much more pleasurable to play and i'm so excited to see once i jump to two if i end up jumping to it just to see how much of a difference it feels just like in movement and shooting because before jumping from ME1 to ME2 was like immediately apparent. I wonder if it's going to also feel as immediately apparent now that I make the jump, especially mm -hmm. because the second game still holds up relatively well, like I mentioned. Right. Uh, and, and then I've also been playing Destiny 2, which you didn't mention, but you've also been playing that in between because the addiction it's in. Just keep I just kept raiding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm understanding better the um what the gameplay loop is supposed to be like, and mm -hmm. it's making it under a little more understandable to me to actually do the things necessary. And now um, you understand why having a raid kind of like as the carrot and the, the, the carrot at the front of the stick, as everything kind of surrounds it, it may it gives more of a, like a drive for you to like do all the content to always be ready for that raid because you always kind of want to be ready and improve so you can make the raid go faster so you can farm more good weapons. And you actually did get a really cool roll for your scout yeah. rifle with this. That that was really good to see the luck of it. Did we discuss that on the podcast yet? Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that you kept getting really good rolls. Luck. and Yeah, and I keep getting bad roll. But however, in, in a raid that I didn't do with you, I did get cool rolls. I still don't have the weapon I want from that raid, but 
it's like it's, it's I got better rolls from the other weapons that I got, which is better than nothing. <laughs> so that's true. And I mean, I I really wish there were some things that um for instance certain shaders and other um weapon armor pieces that weren't so difficult to find or like they they haven't been sunsetted but like the method of getting them has been mm -hmm. and so it's now like nearly impossible to find certain things we like are at the mercy of rng now i know uh, <laughs> at that point and like um one thing i'm realizing is how much of like a an odyssey it is to get uh exotics and i feel like like that's one of the things that I want to do next is um, I was going through different videos of, all right, well, this is a really cool weapon. How do I get it? And then it's like, as long as I know the process, I can just kind of go do that and have yeah. fun along the way. You can, what you can do is just play the nightfall, like keep leveling up. Right. You hit me up and we can do like the third high of difficulty of the nightfall and we can I realize it. that because it's not yeah. matchmaking, but I feel like with two of us, yeah, um, there's two of them that are match made, the 1240 and 12, 1280 right. power level. You can do it by like the the luck and the drop rates that are not the same as the 1310. That is, that's the one that's not match made. Right. So you can get it there. And also because today is we're recording on a Friday, Zer, the alien vendor also comes in and yeah. since you barely have any exotics, that's a good way to get whatever he's selling Mm -hmm. weekly and also get the engram for like 97 shards yeah ready to get like a random and it it has lock protection because you barely have any exotic mm -hmm. it'll always pick something that you don't have right so you always have that kind of lock that's a good way for you to like start building it up mm -hmm. so that's um actually after this between this and going to work I'm wondering if I have the opportunity to log in, find them real quick. And hey, you have the PS, you have handle. the PS5 version, so you should be able to load I, them really quickly. I have realized the cinematic sometimes takes longer than loading into the next place, <laughs> so it'll actually play yeah. through. But the mm -hmm. second like the ship pulls into its place, it's like then it's it's diving. But before in. before you had to like hear the entire dialogue of wait a few seconds oh, yeah. and then it goes in. It's it's mm -hmm. insane like how quickly having an SSD works for that game. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and the final game that I've also played because I wanted to replay it anyway, but what happened this week finally pushed me to it after the last time I played on Platinum the Horizon. I restarted, I restarted yeah. that one. And I'll say more of my chat when we talk later, but yeah, that's, those have been oh, the three games that I have. Uh, I'm very interested to see what your next, like, revisiting that uh, opinion is. Yes, because it's been a while, and I've always had a high uh, opinion of that game, and that hasn't really changed, but we'll leave that for later. So now that we talk about what we've been playing, now it's less time for something very meaty, our news section. So, Paul, press X. For some news. All right, Paul. Um, do you like your switch? I love it. I don't use it often enough. It's actually sitting right next to me. Yes. And it's disappeared. There it is. There it is. And I have the exact same color one. So, Paul, would you be willing to use it more if it was more powerful? I think I would, Alejandro. Well, I have some good news because apparently there is a announcement imminent for the long rumor Switch Pro. So, according oh. to according to our favorite outlet Bloomberg, who has given oh. us so many juicy, very uh, very important details before, like last year when they reported about the PS5 and all of that, uh, there's a report that says we are due for an official announcement for the long rumored upgrade for the Nintendo Switch in the days prior to E3. So like we're today is what day is today is May twenty eighth. E three starts officially on June twelfth. Obviously, there's the summer game fest presentation on June tenth by Jeff Keighley that we talked in the last episode. Yeah. So between now and June tenth, at any moment, we're supposed to get a confirmation of this Switch Pro. Just to kind of go with like the PS four Pro that's supposed to be an upgrade of the machine that's supposed to gave us a seven inch screen. So you know how, like when you're looking at the switch, if you're looking at it now, there's like the black bar at the, at the edge. If mm -hmm. you look at it, yeah, that's supposed to be filled up now. Hmm. And when you dock it, it's supposed to give you now 4k gaming, which 
would be quite a jump for, for the Switch. And right. supposedly the rumor is that the thing it's supposed to start be assembled in July and it's going to be sold around September and October. So right, right, right around the holiday season. And the price will be priced higher than the original $299 price because of the tech, which I would expect to. Like you can't do a 4K machine, a yeah. machine that can do something in 4K, even though it's not going to be the screen because in a screen that small, you hmm. don't need 4K resolution. So because there's no need for like 4K is more notable when you have like a big screen, like the one that we used yeah, to see in your camera, sense. but we can't see because of the logo now. So <laughs> that's literally to your right. left. So yeah, 4K is for is yeah, 4K is more to get cleaner resolution and bigger screens. Yeah. So, but I think more importantly, if you can do 4K, that means that performances in your games are going to be better. But obviously, that will come with a bigger price tag. Mm-hmm. It should be noted though that um, the uh, Switch Lite model that came out like in late 2019, that's just handheld. It's still going to be sold. And that is still priced at 199 And there has been no mention that the base model of the Switch, the ones that you and I have, are mm-hmm. going to be discontinued. So kind of like the when the PS4 Pro and the Xbox, uh, Xbox One X came out, the base models were not phased out. So yeah, <laughs> I got a text. So yeah, I lost my turn of thought because of that stupid text. Uh, so that means that you would you would still like if you don't want to spend extra, but you still want to have the switch, you'll still be able to buy a switch unless they come out and say this is the new switch, the old one, screw it, it's it's being discontinued, it's just gonna be pro and light. The only way that I can see the new switch replacing the new one is if they press it at two ninety nine because then after that, where what's the need of the normal one? From a normal business perspective, I would agree with that. But considering this is Nintendo, I feel like it's a full toss up because they could easily say, hey, guess what? We're moving tech forward, either Mm -hmm. pay up or don't buy it. We don't Mm -hmm. care. Um, Or either upgrade or downgrade to either the pro or the light. Um, I could fully see them going full guts to the wall on that one. But at the same time, the smart option would be just like you said, with the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro um, and the Xboxes, um, not the Series X, the, the One Xbox X. One X. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's okay, like by the way, this, is a, the this is a thing like is the, the naming for Microsoft machines is the worst. <laughs> horrible <laughs> the words like serious one x serious x it's like it's if, so confusing <laughs> if you don't know what you're looking for it would be so difficult i can see for like family and friends to figure out what they're actually looking for that's why In, I, just picture it everyone going to gamestop hey um i'm here to buy the one x the, the xbox x um do you want the series x or the one x mm-hmm. i only know it's that it's the xbox x so here is this <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I guarantee, like, I actually know of many families that bought the wrong system for their kids for Christmas because they didn't know what it was. And um, all they knew was the incorrectly titled text that their parent or kid had sent them. And they're saying, no, it's the Xbox One X. That's what I want. And we're like, are you sure? because <laughs> uh, we know that you're probably wrong about this yeah. to be fair to microsoft they did this discontinue the one x but retailers still had yeah the machine so they, they, they still need, needed to clear out their stock mm-hmm. so but it's just a so funny but yeah yeah that tangent aside here's a, what i'm also curious because this was proved anecdotally that despite like for example the ps4 pro being in the market and Sony, like whenever they would do presentations and all that, they would show us the PS4 Pro version because it's the one that looks better, mm-hmm. allegedly. Um, the base model was still the one that sold more. Hmm. More people owned the base instead of the Pro. Same with the One X. More people still bought the Slim, the Xbox One S, instead of the One X because the upgrades are more a luxury purchase instead of like a necessary thing, especially because they don't have like real exclusives. Right now, that's where I am trepidatious with this new switch because it reminds me of the horrors of the new of the new 3ds. Oh yeah, remember, remember that? Mm-hmm. But 
the one that had the little button that served as like the the R stick that the R stick that you could you had to like bolt in into the original DS mm-hmm. because like there were I think one of the Xenofe the, the Xeno Chronicle it was the Pro. Xenoblade Chronicles X yeah um, was exclusive to that yeah. the new 3DS and then the it, remake and, for the X Xenoblade I can't remember yeah and then a new uh, then again like Hard Warriors mm-hmm. could be played on normal 3D uh, on normal 3DS. But the performance of normal 3DS was Cyberpunk 2077 base PS4, Xbox One levels of horrible compared to playing it on a new 3DS. Yeah. The thing is that those were like the only two times Nintendo did that. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if they either learned their lesson or they're going to start brute forcing people into moving towards a new thing. Because the one thing I did appreciate from Microsoft and, and, and Sony when they upgraded their previous consoles was that they made it a point to be like, there's not going to be exclusive games for these machines. They're always going to play your games better, but you can still remain in your base machine unless you feel the need to. In my right. case, I'm still rocking my launch PS4. Like I never upgraded that. It sounds like a jet turbine now. Yeah, uh, I don't know how it survived because that actually, it was, I mean, okay timing on my part that I had to upgrade to the Pro because my old one ended up finally dying on me. Mm-hmm. And... um so it's kind of surprising that there exists even more that still are working fine after all these years. Yeah, I think it as long as you keep it clean and in a ventilated place, I think you can make this mission survive. But because I actually had my PS3 die back in the day, I had the fat one, the launch one, yep. but I didn't know better and I had it in the floor. Back, uh-huh. back in my room, I didn't have like a... Like, like like furniture to put it in like elevated so a bunch of dust came in and that killed it so that can help but yeah mine sounds like a jet turbine and with some of the games that are still coming out i think especially the one we're going to talk about later yep. i think that machine is gonna like literally fly to the stratosphere <laughs> so no so yeah and i'm i'm one i'm just thankful that at least in 10 uh, Sony and Microsoft didn't like segment the, their market too much with their release of that new machine. It still respected the people that invested early. The Nintendo one, because they're such a dumb company sometimes and they do like the most asinine things possible. Like last episode, we talked about the Amiibo for Skyward Sword. Mm. I can expect them to do something stupid. <laughs> so like, because that's just Nintendo. So, but yeah, whether we like it or not, uh, they are doing a, a pro for their switch, which I think is kind of necessary because when the switch came out, power wise, it was behind the Xbox One, like the base one already. So it was, and, and it came out four years before the base machines came out. So now that we're in PS5, Xbox Series X generation, there's a massive power gap. And in dev, that can be a problem. Especially, so, just thinking about them finally have an option to do something more powerful, it, do, it does make me wonder that that's why they might just start segmenting their market into the Switch Pro. Yeah. Just because the power differentiator between base model now and where the current consoles are, it's such huge, it's, it's, it's a huge gap. I guess and, it just depends on how powerful it'll end up being because mm-hmm. if it's that powerful, then they can't afford to stretch current users mm-hmm. um and like stifling their developers to make it for such obsolete tech i mean look at cyberpunk mm-hmm. um it slows down the ability for the devs to really do what they're supposed to do and considering nintendo works so closely with so many of the people that put their stuff on the switch at least like first party and mm-hmm. second party mm-hmm. um <clears throat> I would think that it's almost within their benefit if the Switch Pro is that powerful mm-hmm. to just say, hey, listen, we're going to start sunsetting the regular, just start working on it, and mm-hmm. we'll go from there. Yeah, and, and that's always a very tricky position to be in. Like, for example, right now, the Switch, uh, we talked about, like, they're, like, at 80-plus million units sold with only four years in the market that already sold outsold what the PS4 did, and that thing was, and the PS4 was historic, and in its, in its success, and would they be willing to cut their switch at the knees to basically restart a new with a new model, or they're going to straddle the line? It's a, 
again, because Nintendo is such unorthodox in the way they approach things, yep. I think they can easily screw it up unless they take the right lessons. The thing that does make me excited about it, though, because I even as I've gone back to Breath of the Wild sometimes because I still have a bunch of shrines that I need to finish and I still haven't played the DLC. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. My might of respect for people that got all those shrines. Uh, if I tend to forget how badly that game performs at times, like the amount of slowdown that really? can happen. But yeah. Hmm. Yeah. At, at times, like when there are a bunch of particles are flying or you're seeing a lot of the, um, of the grass effect moving, it's like, it, it, st- it gets stuck at like straight 20 frames. Wow. So I have you to would, go back to that. Yeah. Back you would, this. yeah. You would notice it now more because you have played in smooth performance. So, uh, when, when, whenever you know what a good performance is and are you hearing that no okay thank you thank god because there's construction happening still <laughs> so like, he followed you yeah, again <laughs> i always have something following oh, like some man. weird background noise here um so whenever you really get a taste of what really solid 60 frames performance is when you go down and you see something that's not consistent you notice it more so that happened to me as well because before I didn't mind because performance didn't really matter that much to me. Are you for sure not hearing that? Nothing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That this will be fun. Okay. Yeah. Because that's always my worry that that's going to be sounding like my dog or the vegetable man. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. I mean, who knows what's going to show up on your playback, but at least on my end, I don't hear it. If you don't hear it, no one will hear it. <laughs> so. Cool. So that's good. So yeah, so before, so moving on with from the Nintendo Switch. So yeah, keep an eye out if you're interested and your Switch is coming. So it's now about when their Nintendo is going to announce it. Knowing them is going to be in a random Thursday because mm-hmm. they're so random sometimes. So staying on the E3 track, um, following what we talked about last week, that Microsoft was going to actually be at E3, like the, from a January 12 to 15 timeframe, they already confirmed the date of their presentation. Sunday, June 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific time and 1 p.m. Eastern time. That will be your in central time, Paul. So that will be your 12. Yep. Because right now it's 12.22 where you're at, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, yeah, it is 1.22 where I'm at. So yeah, I'm on the East Coast currently. So the presentation is supposed to go for 90 minutes and it will be a showcase for both Beth- Microsoft and Bethesda's upcoming lineup. I don't remember if I mentioned this last week, but that they were saying that they were going to be sharing E3 stage, but as Microsoft and Bethesda, despite the fact that Bethesda is under Microsoft now because they purchased it. So I think they're just trying to still drive that cloud that Bethesda is still going to operate on its own thing, even though they own them. So this is- I can imagine how much confusion that would lend for people that don't follow the business side of the gaming industry where it'll say okay here's microsoft's conference and then they start talking about all of bethesda's ips i feel like that would cause so much confusion for the casual viewer that um it's probably worth it for them to just say microsoft and bethesda until it's more common knowledge and Mm -hmm. that that would be my guess yeah that could and also because where um for good or ill bethesda is a big name no matter what, like we tend to forget that the purchase of Bethesda was such a monumental industry disruption that they basically swallowed an entire publisher. So being able to flaunt that in front of everyone is still a power move, no matter what. Yeah, really. So I think it will be it would behoove them for this presentation to really solidify that Bethesda being under them means that their lineup is exclusive to them. Because if there's one thing that Microsoft has really failed at is communication because they don't speak clear. They always speak in such word salads that always gives you with the idea of basically, uh, oh yeah, we, we will have games showing up in systems that have Game Pass in it. Instead of being like, we own them and their games are going to be exclusive to us. They don't yeah. talk plainly. So there's always, I think, oh, will Starfield be on PS5? Will the next Elder Scrolls be in PS5? Will the next Fallout be in PS5? Um, because they don't speak plainly. They, they would behoove them now that they're going to be sharing stage to yeah. make that clear because they just don't speak clear. They're like, when Nintendo buys someone, you're like, you know, their things are going to be exclusive. Like when Sony bought Insomniac, you knew, okay, they bought them. Things are going to be exclusive to them. They don't pussyfoot around the thing. 
So that would behoove them a lot. And also more, imp- especially for, Mac- for Microsoft, we should be hearing more about Halo Infinite at this That's E3. That's what I'm looking forward to. Yes, because they have to nail it. They got burned to the coal last year with that Halo Infinite presentation, if you remember. It's like Greg. the most powerful console in the world. And here's a game that doesn't look that much better than a 360 game. That's exaggerating. Of course it does, but it gave that perception because it didn't quite look right from what you were expecting from such a high-end machine. So really, then of course, and we got Craig. some of the first actual gameplay we saw that was supposed to be running on next gen mm-hmm. um, machinery. Yeah. And things like that, they were even mentioning when the game was originally was supposed to launch, it wouldn't even have ray tracing, which is like the big oh, yeah. next gen, um, the big next gen thing. Which is really unfortunate that ray tracing is a thing when everyone immediately switches away from ray tracing to put it to 60 frames per second yeah it it hurts my soul that i have to do that now Mm -hmm. and the fact that like i just can't do you guys like the performance better right yeah you like yeah cool ray tracing whatever reflections but also especially if it's like a shooter or something you're not going to forego the Mm -hmm. smoothness for some pretty reflections exactly. and um I, ha- I probably haven't even experienced ray tracing at all since i've had the ps5 because i just switch it to performance mode. yeah i like what some developers do like for example miles uh, spider-man miles morales they this didn't launch like that but they patched it in because in that game like you could choose like one or the four, other yeah one or the other it was like a four full 4k ray trace 30 frames mm-hmm. and then like not quite 4k but 60 frames, yeah. and they added a third mode that could have 60 frames and some ray tracing. Oh, so, but they patched that later. Mm. But when it launched, it wasn't that; it was one or the other. Mm. So, and if I'm I'm honest, I've become the believer that frame rate's more important than graphics. If I'm perfectly honest, at so, this point, it's like 60 frames is going to have to be the benchmark for everything moving forward and everything else. Because the machines are capable now. In right. the PS, the PS4 and Xbox One had very weak CPUs. So it wasn't feasible to always have 60 frames in everything. And even when they had 60 frames, it wasn't the locked 60 that's super smooth. It was the perceptive ones. Right. Which can fluctuate all over the place. Exactly. And you're right, you would get used to the fluctuations, but then when you play something so rock solid, you start noticing it later. Yep. So yeah, they have to make up for that and also solidify when it comes out because we have to remember that for everything Microsoft has done right, in the exclusive front for the Xbox Series X, it's as bad as it's ever been. Like nothing has come out other than the medium back in January and that game like a fart in the wind. So yeah. game, game Pass is keeping them afloat. Like if it wasn't for Game Pass, like and all the consumer friendly moves they've done, I would I don't even know how the Xbox Series X would even still be alive. Because that's such a failure that you launch a machine without games. Mm-hmm. Whereas your competitor that's doing everything wrong in the consumer friendly front. It's yep. nailing it in the important front, which is games. But then so. not being able to let people buy your system is forcing people to move over to Xbox. Exactly. Anyway, so yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's just a mess for a both of them. Yeah. cycle right, right? now. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, uh, so what are we doing next? <laughs> yeah, wait, no, no, moving on from that. So speaking of their competitor, Sony held an investor call where they basically laid out some of the strategies for the coming year since we're basically now in the new fiscal year. Probably the most important information of all of this is that their experiment of finally starting to put their exclusives on PC mm-hmm. did pay off for them. Like they found some success that it wasn't a one of they're going to continue doing that. Obviously, that's a strategy that Microsoft has been doing since like 2016, adding exclu- their exclusives having a PC version. The only difference is that Sony is not doing day and date. They're still letting the console versions have their time in the limelight yeah. and have a PC version down the line. So I mean, by yeah makes sense for their side because it creates the demand for people to buy it on console and that's where you get where they get their money because they have the demand for the console and the game on the console yeah and here's also the thing for um that behooves sony like for example microsoft they couldn't sell xboxes and they wouldn't care because they all care about like the actual bottom line that is their services and games bought and all that like the way their economics work is that as long as people get their games no matter where they're playing them they're good for Sony, because they're such a hardware company instead of software, it behooves them for people to buy their machine. So 
if you put day and date PS5 slash PS4 and PC games, people will still get it on PC. There wouldn't be a reason to buy the machine. But by doing exactly. it this way, they could basically grab the orange, extract all the juice out of the orange until you run it dry. Like when a game, like for example, Horizon, by the time it came out to PC, the game would always be sold for 10 bucks, the complete edition yep. on PS4. So at that point, you know that you've extracted all the juice out of the out of the orange or the fruit, whatever analogy you want right. you, you to use. Plus, so, I think, wasn't there a point where they gave it away for free one month? Exactly. It, yeah. You reach the point where you basically give it away for free. That was this year. So why not also put it on PC, charge it close to full price, like 50 bucks or 40, depending. You're yeah. making more money and you're opening it up for the rest of the market. And then when the new entry comes out and people that got a taste of it on PC, if they really want to play the next game immediately, then they'll buy the console. But if not, they'll wait and still get it and everybody wins. That's just the the reality now and uh they're doing that after they did that with horizon last year like i mentioned and uh days gone this past month actually funny enough on pc days gone was more successful than horizon what yes it charted high on steam and wow yeah. i guess because of those improvements on the pc version that mm -hmm. didn't exist until very recently on the ps5 and i um, would say that um a zombie game it's less of a high concept. Um, con it's less of a high concept compared to Horizon's more like caveman sci-fi unique thing. Yeah. So, and also I think uh, it has to be noted that the Horizon Zero Dawn port was rough. Also, there was some it, it launched with some problems. It, it wasn't it, it wasn't properly giving the frame rate that people wanted. It had some bugs and all that. So some word of mouth had it kind of like come under what people were expecting they eventually got there but yeah. the days gone port came in really well hmm. from what like i didn't hear any anything catastrophic about it <laughs> so i mean considering how poorly the console launch was i would say mm -hmm. everything is an improvement for days gone exactly so. i mean good for them though um yeah it's I, sad because days gone is dead <laughs> After yeah. we, I mean, after we, I want to say for now it's dead because I still believe that there's a chance that somebody's going to look back on it in the past. I mean, we're now having people that have said absolutely this will never happen, and then they'll come back for another round mm -hmm. once either the money shows up or they look back on it finally enough to say, hey, maybe I'll try it again. And um, and the and the things that we always have to remember that as rough as Days Gone was, that game sold really well. They patched that game to be more stable or like through its time like the mm -hmm. game has a, a fervent fan base that really defend that game in a way you don't see most exclusive sometimes yeah. especially when the divide between critical reviews and user review is such wide like compared to other ones so i do hope that the pc version being relatively successful may want to help them rethink visiting the second game mm -hmm. so but besides this point of the pc the most important part about this news is that in a slide that they show that people got a hold of about like what the plans are of like upcoming games they want to, they're gonna put on PC. Uncharted 4 was there. Yep. So this was interesting because so they're gonna give they're gonna make a PC port for Uncharted, which would be the first time Uncharted's ever been on PC because the first three games never never made it there. And this is the final game for Nathan Drake. So they're giving PC gamers the ending of the story. Without like no context, so give you all some visual representation. I'll go ahead and pull this up um, because yes, um, as great as it looks, I would say the the age is beginning to show um, with the thirty frames per second locked. Um, the like it, it it looks great and um, it, it feels beautiful. great. It's not it, our video is not making it justice, especially because it's a little shadowy. But... Yeah. Um, it's even on this like i guess because it's 720 frames uh per second mm -hmm. not frames with goodness gracious resolution mm -hmm. um it's like it's got the rough edges on the sides of everything right now but um mm -hmm. man i just i have such a positive <laughs> memory of this and then you almost didn't until uh mm -hmm. like a second playthrough of it all but yeah now I mean, I, what were you saying? It's still, it's still not my favorite Uncharted, but I feel highly higher of it after replaying it. But 
I still stand that it's probably the least replayable of all of them <laughs> compared to like the more bree- breezy, breezy ones, but it's still a phenomenal story. Yeah, like, I mean, like it's still the best story of the four games. I would think that um, I'm realizing that I am a huge sucker for a good ending and a good ending will smooth over almost mm-hmm. everything about a story for me. And I mean, I, we keep bringing it up, but um, the unnamed series that decided to not do that yeah. um, <laughs> made that very clear. And I mean, mm-hmm. they're making some parallels in this video to Tomb Raider as well with mm-hmm. how similar they made some of this anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, what I was saying was how important it is for like a good ending emotionally to pull it all together. And I was so blown away by how concise um, and enjoyable that ending for Uncharted 4 was that it makes me go back every once in a while to be, to re-experience that whole f- flood of emotions Mm -hmm. and um the the earn your happy ending that has to be created it's it's very it's so crazy that in a world as cynical as the one we live in that they managed to end uncharted in such an upbeat well-earned moment that just leaves you with a smile splatter all over you it's like the, the ending is such a joy that's the thing like i replayed uncharted 4 last year in the best of circumstances right after playing the entire trilogy Mm-hmm. And there's just something about uh, it's kind of similar to me with uh, the, hey, the show Uncharted yeah. 2, my favorite. <laughs> uh, and there's also my other favorite, Uncharted 3. I always defend the 3. Um, there's just something, it's kind of like Avengers Endgame, like or in the, Mar- in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's like yeah. just re watching it by itself, it's still a great moment. It, it's still really good, but there's just something extra special if it comes after a long. Um, not like at the end of like a replay or watching everything and having everything fresh in your mind to see the little callbacks, to see like the references, to see, to feel the emotion of something coming to an end. I think that's what Uncharted 4 nails. Mm-hmm. And you only get that feeling if you have the other three games fresh in your mind. If you just play Uncharted 4 by itself, I think it's, um, it's impact is lessened a little bit. And that was kind of my problem that me trying to replay it wasn't with like the freshness of having the other two games. So, it will make me think about how like slow some of the gameplay is, even though right now we're watching uh, some, of, some, some of like the combat. Like right. I still feel like the combat, I prefer the combat on two and three and two and three a little better because there's more of it compared to this one. Like four is the one that had the least combat. It, there's a, it's the one that lets you breathe almost too much <laughs> in a way. Yeah. I, the, I I honestly story, never even thought yeah. much about that. Um, yeah, but the story is pretty good. That's the thing. Like that game's carried by that story. Yeah, like it like it, re- it really is. So I will still say that I wish the game had more set pieces because this I, one they yeah, had um, it, it only has one really 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 legendary one, the one at Madagascar where you're yeah. with the cars. Like compared to the building falling on two the train sequence on two the airplane sequence in three the mm-hmm. boat sequence in three like i'm not the one that says that uncharted is all about the set pieces because i think it's just one of the elements that makes it great i just wish for with how good it looks and how refined it is and how great its story is it had that one element also yeah <laughs> i so. do remember um i was thinking the same thing when i first played four and i was thinking okay cool we went to um I think it was Kings Bay Mm -hmm. in Madagascar. And then they immediately go into a very similar environment. And that is the last environment you go into. And I kept thinking, okay, where's the next one Mm -hmm. that they're going to go to next for like the final big confrontation, but you just stayed on the island the whole time. And now I understand why they were making it more grounded. They were really wanting to focus in on this area. And they, I, I would think the extra polish they put onto this one location mm-hmm. and environment really paid off for them but yeah as like an initial person that was following up with that i was like all right well let give me some more cool outfits um it's just i mean yeah he wears some different outfits but for the main action set pieces it's really just the same blue shirt for the whole game mm-hmm. um i and and, I mean, and also this like for example if you read some of the reviews around the time this game was always criticized by an overly long third act yeah and I don't agree with that because a lot of people, just because you get into the island around chapter 13 and you're there until the end, 
right. chapter 21 that was like oh, the third act made. yeah and that's not supposed to be a third act it's like it's the final environment but it's not a the third act is not nine chapters long it is not the third act starts after the flashback on chapter 16 right it, it makes sense in the context of everyone who's played the game up and uh, the series up until now has experienced the act in a certain way um and that was the formula so when they broke through that people mm -hmm. were misunderstanding the last environment as the last act mm -hmm. which it used to be that way um, exactly but this game was a subversion of what uncharted used to be almost like it's slower than most like it's more pensive it's more emotional right. so before we keep going on with on the tangent because that's the thing ultimately i still really 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 like this game back to the pc version even though pc gamers that never played the trailer yes. you're gonna miss out the whole i think it's bringing this up <laughs> yeah yes i think um it's interesting that that will be the first time that this game in particular is going to be at 60 frames because modern naughty dog games with the exception of four and lost legacy all of them are 60 frames now, especially with the Last of Us Part 2 patch from the last episode. Something that you episode. mentioned that uh, surprised me, actually. I forgot that they had brought it up to 60 frames per second for the trilogy. Mm -hmm. The Nathan Drake collection. It's this like a lot of 60. And uh, Lost Legacy are the only two that are still at that um, level. I mean, I guess you could always say the, the PS Vita one never reached that either. But exactly, hey, that yeah, one's kind of lost in exactly. the shuffle. Yeah, especially if it wasn't made by Naughty Dog, so they don't really acknowledge it, even though the Vita, the, that Vita game is pretty good. I would even say it's better than the original game, but it wasn't made by Naughty Dog, so they try to pretend it wasn't. It's not. Uh, it's not part of it. Hmm. But going back to uh, to this, like it's interesting. So it makes me wonder. Since it's gonna be on PC, will the work that's there then they will be like, we made it work at sixty frames here. Should we just like roll it in or ro roll it over to the PS Five? So uh, there's like unity between all of them. So I would hope so, because just for consistency sake, I think if you just imagine you play everything in six, except this one. So, and, and, and here's also funny because remember these games have multiplayer, the multiplayer is at 60, oh, yeah, the multiplayer really. runs at 60. So you might as well, like you have the code there, just like unlock it for the rest. You have a machine that can do it. Last of Us Part 2 uses the same engine. In fact, there's so much of Uncharted 4 in The Last of Us Part 2. Like, so much. Yeah, I can, so, I can definitely see it. Yeah, so you might as well do it. And that'll be interesting. I wonder when this will come out and if it rolls over to the PS5. And also, I'm interested, after Uncharted, what's the next PC game? My bet, God of War. I think God of War is the next. Ooh. And it'd be awesome if it is, because God of War... I still say God of War is the best exclusive the PS4 had. So... That would be great for people to really experience it, especially because I've seen videos of the 60 frames in the PS5 uh, patch they released for God of War. So imagine people could run it at even higher NPC. That'd be amazing. So be fantastic. Absolutely. Moving on from that. Uh, yes. So, so say, staying on the Sony front, uh, yesterday they held a in a state of, a state of play. Kind of like they did last year with both The Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima. That is just about one game. And they finally showcased 14 minutes of first little gameplay for Horizon for Forbidden West. Kind of how I was mentioning that I went back to Horizon. It was because after watching this, I finally had the inkling to go back. So this game that's still coming to both PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, even though the video was showcased on PlayStation 5, Showcase a sequel with quality of life improvements like improved melee combat and more flexible mobility. And also, and obviously, things like um, more foliage, being able to like swim that wasn't in the original game, more color, all of that. It looked pretty impressive to me personally. Uh, and the present, though the presentation ended with no release date, which was disappointing and could raise some concerns about if whether that game is actually coming out this year. However, it's interesting that this presentation happened a week and a half after a Wired article that I mentioned to you, I think it was two episodes ago, that the president of Sony Interactive Entertainment, also former Guerrilla Games head, who made Horizon, Herman Hulls, mentioned that he had played the game and it was, the, the, the development of the game was on track despite COVID. And after this presentation, the game director and writer, whose names I don't, I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce there, 
they're, they're weird Netherlands names. Um, they reiterate after a presentation that the game's still on track, like development wise. And they're, they promised that they were going to give us more details about a release date soon. So maybe they're going to save it for the Sony presentation that is sure coming around or after E3. I would think that maybe in the middle of everything, they might reveal the release date. But uh, I mean, this is the same people that ended up making part of their uh, presentation, just revealing the logo for PlayStation mm -hmm. uh, 5. <laughs> um, so clearly they don't thinking very clearly about the idea of uh, forthcoming information and it's probably to avoid the problems of some unnamed people in the past giving a release date too early and then mm -hmm. having to renege on that and um, many times <laughs> and i mean not just to beat the dead horse but there's been several um developers that have done that very notoriously and for this year being one of the most justifiable to mm -hmm. delay a game i would think that is the opportunity for them to um hold that card closer to their chest just in case um best to show a little bit here a little bit there get people hyped at a right nice little smooth curve mm -hmm. and then give them a general idea once they have a solid idea. Um, it, so. It's interesting seeing, like, especially for the different Sony games, that the, the difference in when they finally reveal a release date and, and the ones that did and also delayed, like, for example, just for history, like God of War 2018 held its date up until the last minute. They, official, they officialized the date on, like, the end of January 2018, and the game was out on uh, on April 20th. Yeah, 420. It, the game actually came out on 420 on 2018. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, but they, they literally held it. They were like, we're going to hold it until we're really, 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 really sure that it's going to come out. And they put the date, even though internally, if you look at the documentary for God of War, they had an idea of releasing that game on March 2018. But they internally delayed it, but because they didn't say anything, they didn't have to like put a date and then be like, oh yeah, this game has been delayed. Right. So then compared to The Last of Us Part Two, which they had the state of play where they revealed that game was going to come out on February 21st, uh, 2020. Then three weeks, three weeks after they put the date out, they delayed it to May 29th. Yep. And then COVID happened and that whole thing that they was going to be indefinitely delayed because of the uh, the production of discs and all of that. So it was then indefinitely delayed. Then the leaks happened. And then because the leaks were so catastrophic, they had to like recontrol the message. So then it went from indefinitely delayed to just two week delay to come out in June. Then um, Ghost of Tsushima put out their, yeah, this game's coming out in June. And then they delayed it because they were not going to release it next to Last of Us. So they yep. push it, but that wasn't their fault. <laughs> so, and even more recently, um, Returnal. That game originally oh, was, yeah. yeah, Returnal announced its date back in September mm -hmm. of last year. Then on December and January, they delayed it to April. So I, w I do wonder if Horizon's already an established franchise, kind of like God of War is. So I wonder if they're like, yeah, we might as well just do what it wants, just mm -hmm. wait. And have a release. The comments from the XX saying that it's on track still makes me believe this game comes out this year. But the fact that they didn't even put out a year uh, in, in the presentation, then I am understand people being skeptical. But skepticism about the release of this game. Paul, what do you think of the demo that they showcased? The one um, we're looking at. That I I think the improvements to it are amazing. Um, it added a lot that i thought it was missing um because a lot of my problem um well the solution is on screen right now actually um one of the most freaking over the top anime like quick shot moves that um i've seen showing up in that um because they're to me the gameplay loop seemed a little too simple mm -hmm. um that might sound like an absolute first world problem for me um but the problem that I have is uh, single shot weapons. I'm not very great at them. Mm -hmm. I love bows. I, I love them. But sometimes the game's got to really give me a little help to get me through it. And um, 
I felt like there wasn't enough progression in the original Horizon. Um, I felt like I got the best out of the weapons and armor that I was really going to get out of them outside of a few minor tweaks to mods here and there. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I really struggled with those things. Um, the spear gameplay felt like it was hit one or two buttons and uh, there one. wasn't a lot. Yeah, just one. I thought there was like a heavy attack, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I think it was just R1 to do that. And the improvements to that, the gliding feature, as we see now, the mm -hmm. grappling hook, the extra move sets uh, to the melee, the, I mean, they always had like the, your slingshots, your um, spear launcher and different things like that, which I loved, but mm -hmm. um in the end, I just could not keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the final straw being, I am not a huge fan of like the caveman mm -hmm. aesthetic in general. Um, and considering this one leans so heavily into that, I think that also affected my ability to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I really pushed further into the game that I could get used to the gameplay and enjoy myself in that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping it looks like they're kind of adding a lot of the things that i had problems with initially yeah and um it from the looks of the demo it. from the looks of the demo this is the assassin's creed 2 thing of yes. having a really great idea having some solid base mechanics and having a sequel that can refine it mm -hmm. replay like i mentioned replaying it uh the original it's like the first game is so static you're so in the floor most of the time it's like it's a, it's a game where your feet are such in the ground that the most impressive thing about this demo is the verticality alone. Yeah, like the addition of the grappling hook, the glider, that's like Breath of the Wild, like all of that just like makes me so excited about the game that's just going to be more dynamic to traverse, more dynamic to like have even more options for combat. And it just looks more refined. It's such incredibly beautiful game that I don't know if our stream is... Uh, it is it's, probably butchering the heck it's butchering out of a lot of that but if you had the, like I, because i asked paul this like off, off camera like yesterday um if you have a tv that has like a built-in youtube app and it's 4k or even if the ps5 has a youtube app which i would i would assume it has that would allow you to play the thing in 4k watch this thing in 4k mm. it's mouth-watering <laughs> it's almost impossibly look good looking like Things that sometimes you think are CG are not CG. It's straight gameplay. I can't believe we're here. <laughs> I, I'm very glad for that. Um, I mean, one of the greatest uh, methods of that and examples was the moment of Final Fantasy VII Remake mm -hmm. when it switched from the cinematic turned around cloud and immediately turned into gameplay. Um, yeah, that, that made me so excited for the realization that we finally reached that in games today where you can have in-engine cinematics that look just as good as the gameplay itself and um now it's almost worse to rely on uh like a full motion video or mm -hmm. cg uh, cinematic because then you get this weird disconnect between pre-rendered and in-engine um and i'm i'm like an in-engine far more now yeah um, because it's gotten that good now and and to me with horizon uh you that you don't like the cayman aesthetic that's the thing that i appreciate so much about this game because it is so rare to see a property that makes us such like primitive native native slash cayman style aesthetic with such a high sci-fi concept like robots mm -hmm. that's such un that that's a unique that's unique you don't see that like in other kind of kind of property, at least in games. So I agree. And I'll like, give credit where it's due yeah, because Horizon, like like despite it being an open world, conceptually, Horizon is one of the more unique games that Sony has. Oh yeah. Yeah, like like at oddly least in enough, concept. Yeah, all in all, yeah, it's like the the methodology is uh, very similar to some other games they have. The exactly. idea is very unique. Yeah, like even I would even like Ghost of Tsushima, I would say like open it's still an open world game but that's still a samurai game uh i think it does some things it, it did some things that i would say improved on what horizon did but the idea is still kind of the same yeah obviously god of war is still like a mythological kind of game it's, it just changed mythologies but it's something that they did with greek mythology 
Uncharted is Indiana Jones, uh, something like that. So Horizon always has had that very unique thing to it. That that's made me always love it. And I would hope that this game, when it ever comes out, is not going to share space with the sequel for Breath of the Wild, because that yeah. because that's the thing. I always felt bad for Horizon that so many people that started playing that game back in 2017 absolutely loved it, but they were also going to play Zelda. And, and that's what happened to me because I did not buy Horizon until after I played Zelda, and then when I looked back through the lens of what happened when I played. That, uh, the latter game first mm-hmm. i could not enjoy the former nearly as much as i probably would have honestly. exactly and ironically now you see that there's some Zelda stuff mm-hmm. in this. <laughs> so you see how it's uh, it just all comes full circle it, yes but exactly. that's the best thing about games mm-hmm. um that's what i love about it is because iterate take, take all the so good much. ideas take all the good ideas from, from everything. everything like don't matter it doesn't matter if you're copying it's like make take the good ideas and Instead of just straight up copying, making better. And I was like, I will still say that combat wise, I will always tend the horizon is better than Zelda. Combat wise, exploration and all of that, Zelda was on another level with the level of freedom that it gave you and the climbing everything. Stamina, that, but... <laughs> stamina circle aside. But oh, yeah. Yeah, stamina. Yeah, that is, but, but that's the thing. Like the game was designed for you to go everywhere, like literally everywhere. Uh, horizon was divided in such a way that you would have to wait to go to certain places to maybe level up something which is more traditional so i would hope that this time they are not going to share space so that this game gets its proper dues because i still believe strongly that had horizon not come out in the same year that Zelda come out it would have been at the top of many game of the year lists i believe that and i stand by that so but Zelda just like absorbed the vacuum it's kind of like, I, I feel the same way as Spider-Man. If Spider-Man had come out in a year that didn't have God of War or Red Dead Redemption oh, 2 on it, I think yeah. Spider-Man would have topped many because that's how good that game was. And that so, game was fantastic. And I, I still like to go back and play it um, every once in a while. That was one of the things that when I was uh, dating my now wife, I mm-hmm. would play, I would start up Spider-Man PS4 and just swing through the city so I could mindlessly do something mm-hmm. to have something to do with my hands because of how freaking nervous I was. <laughs> um, and that was such a good thing to do because i didn't have to have any mental capacity into it and it's just the feel of flying through that city Mm -hmm. feels amazing and they only made it better with um miles morales oh yes exactly with with the quality of life improvements a lot of that thing in the traveling of that game so paul you haven't finished horizon right no i'm gonna put a stake here i'm gonna put mass effect in the back burner because i'm so close to moving into two yeah. Would you be willing to make Horizon our book club game? The game we both play. I replay it so you can finish it. I I will play it. I will see how far I can get to finishing it. I don't mm-hmm. even remember where I was. Um, the uh, the last time I tried turning it back on, I was in the middle of a quest to destroy one of the storm birds, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, Ooh, that thing's tough. <laughs> I got crushed by it immediately because I forgot how to play the game. And um, I realized I was like, well, um, I, I'm going to need to figure out how to play the game from the ground up before I could even do this quest. Yeah, I would say it's an e- the bird. I don't remember it being a main quest. I think that's a side quest. I think so it is. Horizon does a good job. It kind of like Ghost of Tsushima did that. If you just want to mainline it, it clearly points where you can mainline it. Yeah. So I would recommend you do that because it's still a really good story by itself. Doing the side quests, all of them, helps make the final level easier because it's a big battle. And the side quests eventually lead you, lead you to recruit some people that help you in the final battle. Yeah. But it's not that defining. It just kind of enhances it. Mm-hmm. So I would recommend because it's very easy. I think you have the problem I have with open world games that if you see a side quest, you want to do them. Yeah. So, and that one, that game has interesting side quests. I'm not going to lie at that. I think it would it would behoove you to be able to finish that game. So, I'd be willing to this be our first book club. We both played the same game. I haven't played the original Horizon until yesterday. Mm-hmm. Finally, finally repicking it up, and I've been w- wanting to get a reason to do it again. I don't remember much of the story. I remember really liking it. So, <laughs> so 
I I will I will do my best to try finishing it and powering through this following week after the Memorial Day weekend and um, we'll see how we can compare our uh, fresh experiences uh, mm-hmm. next time. Absolutely. What so, is yeah. the next thing we're talking about here, Alejandro? We had something special going on. Yeah, because it's still a, it, it's a week of celebration. Sega, Sega hosted a 30th anniversary stream for Sonic, which I'll just put it aside. Massive improvement from the 25th anniversary. I'm kind of glad I never watched that because considering the way you and some other friends of ours talked about it, it sounded like it was not a fun experience. Uh, Let me put it this way. The presentation of that 25th anniversary stream is absolutely the worst presentation Mm stream-wise for a video game or an event I have ever seen in my entire life. It is an S show of epic proportions and you can see compilations of that thing it's so amazing it's it's a stream that's so emblematic hey, cameo Katie. <laughs> yeah the cameo the cat the giant cat that keeps disappearing because part of his <laughs> body is black <laughs> <The logo. laughs> okay buddy i'll let you go yeah, that was- but that's when if no like literally after this i'm going to send you a link so you can actually see a super cut of just how awful the stream of that thing is but here's the thing because our friend our common friend pj who we mentioned a lot here Mm -hmm. uh, he was at the party he enjoyed the party the thing is the people that i see anecdotally people that were at the 25th anniversary party which was at comic con in 2016 that was fun like some of the stupidity that happened there like my favorite was that they put a a guy in a sonic suit and i think the sonic suit helmet didn't have eyes so oh gosh so they had to like bring him in walk <laughs> and then they brought a, a someone dressed as hello kitty they're like we uh, we were partnering with sanrio to mix sonic with hello kitty let's take a selfie and they put a selfie here and sonic was like to the side just standing there <laughs> because he thought he was there so they had to like push him <laughs> oh my and th- my, my favorite was that they had um they they had they had these some of the Sonic songs. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I just remember this like someone like they were singing, singing Sonic Heroes. Oh no! So so someone was like Sonic Heroes, and then they put the mic to someone to oh, to, no. to say the next, and then the person grabbed it and starts screaming. <laughs> <laughs> like I have to show you like. I'm, I, I'm gonna to this now. Okay. okay. For anyone that watches this, I'm gonna put a link to it in the description so people can see this. It's amazing. It's amazing. Like, and even in the stream, someone screwed up the audio. So throughout the entire audio, you hear something like that. Gosh. Yeah, you know how some something's like some plugs are messing up, and it uh-huh. has like some, so that was like throughout the whole thing during the announcement of Sonic uh, Mania. The audio completely cut out for really? a few for a few minutes. Um, of all things, like the one part that was actually enjoyable. Um yes. is even I got to play a little few minutes of Sonic Mania and enjoyed it. So. it's amazing. Sonic Mania is the best Sonic game that has come out in years. Goodness. Like it really is. So that I like. I, I, I just tell you that Sonic 25th anniversary is legendary. It's so bad. This stream wasn't bad. So mm-hmm. they improve some things and they announced some cool stuff so they announced. they announced a remaster for one of the better 3d sonic games that originally was just on wii sonic colors oh and i <laughs> they didn't never have played. sonic and the black knight hey, that game that has like a they, 30 something on metacritic no no sonic not unleashed <laughs> well we'll talk about that later <laughs> um then um they did so not only they announced sonic colors they also announced a collection of the classic 2d sonic games so the original, the second one, Sonic and Knuckles, uh, Sonic Tales, whatever, like all those classic Genesis ones, they're putting them all in a collection. Hmm. And they also announced a brand new Untitled 3D Sonic game that's coming in 2022. No oh, title wow. anything, they just put a year. It's supposed to be open world. It's supposed to mix elements of generations. Yay! And Unleashed. Oh no. <laughs> and other stuff. I think there was some mobile stuff there. Those are the things that I only really care for. And it was short. 
the stream was so short, I will say that I think they could just have dropped the announcements in a press release and that would have been fine or just dropped the trailer. So at the very least, it's not going to be a legendary disaster like the 25th one. But Paul, how big of a Sonic fan are you? Not at all. (laughs) I loved Sonic Adventure 2 Adventure back on GameCube. I played that a lot. I replayed that quite a lot. The multiplayer, I played that a lot with my sister and my brother. And the music of that game, I love to my heart. I grew up with the original Sonic 2D one. I had a Game Gear. You remember the game? Do you ever remember the Game oh, yeah. Gear? So I, I played the, the Sonic game that wasn't Game Gear. Um, I loathed Sonic 06 on Xbox 360 because I thought it had so much promise. And it's so funny that when they showed the trailer for this 2022 game, the first thing people thought immediately was the trailer for the Sonic 06 that they, that they announced back in the day. I think Sonic 06 has forever tainted what people think of 3D Sonic games forever. I don't know why, but and that game was bad. Bad, bad, bad. I've it's seen a fu- plenty of playthroughs of how horrible it is. I mean, it has I Sonic kissing a lady, yeah, like I've an actual human. It's, it is um, absolutely horrifying. I think that's what that's where the furry syndrome came from after that I, I, I have to put a blame on something so let's blame sonic 06 so all right i'm not as big of sonic, sonic fan as the other 06 ones. is the source of all furries you heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> so i will just say um i tangentially have enjoyed some sonic stuff at the same time i love making fun of sonic because for the majority of its existence it's been more bad than good that 25th anniversary was almost the encapsulation of everything Though I do accept there's been some fun Sonic. Sonic Mania was really good. I think Sonic Heroes was also pretty good. I didn't really, really fully play it, but I enjoyed playing it. I'll still always stand by that Sonic Adventure game. Where will this 3D Sonic game will be? I mean, we are due for another Sonic 06, right? I mean, we need well, more. Well, no, the last one was would have been Sonic Boom, which was Oof. a pretty big Sonic 06 in itself. Yes. Oh, Sonic Boom? Ironically, this is funny. The developer of Sonic Boom was the guy that were the guys that brought back Sly Cooper on PS3. Oh, wow. They remastered the first three games, this the three Sly Cooper games. And they were pretty well received. And they got permission by Sony to do a Sly 4, which was pretty well done, with a teaser for a Sly 5. Sonic Boom, Boom happens. That studio went down the toilet. <laughs> I think it got acquired by Facebook, but it's, let's just say that. After doing that Sonic Boom game, it killed the studio's reputation and then it went under. They worked on one of the Spyro remastered games that Activision did, but not as the official developer. They were just kind of like credited as having done some work, but literally that Sonic Boom killed the cachet of that studio. And then it got absorbed by Facebook. So there's just something, I don't know, did Sonic like do a monkey, get a monkey's boss curse or something that they really it really just, sounds like it. Yeah, because that, I've, I've never seen a property that's actually really popular and so defi- like, and defines the image of its company that is so associated with memes of how bad it usually is. Really, though? Yeah, so, but hey, it's, they, it's been up for 30 years. Somehow people are still loyal to it, despite how bad most of it has been. I so, don't know how. Yeah. But yeah. You know the weirdest thing is my phone vibrates on this desk and I have no idea where it is. Um, I, oh, thank you. It's somehow on the floor next to the desk. There you go. <laughs> That's thought. amazing. All right. Yeah. And so, then final, final story, Paul. Remember one of our first few episodes of the X button? I think it was our second or third we ever did back in 2020. It was an episode all about the delays. Final yeah. Fantasy VII was delayed. Avengers had been delayed. Iron Man had been delayed. That was cyber- most of our news was just like, hey guys, you yeah. remember this cool game? Well, and that was the first of the cyberpunk of the four cyberpunk delays of that year. <laughs> and the final delay was actually Dying Light 2, which at the time was being indefinitely delayed. Ironically, all of this have happened. Any hope for that one, honestly. I, yeah. I expected it to just be gone. Yeah. But and, and here's what's funny, just to give us like a little time capsule of things. 
Dying Light 2 was indefinitely delayed before COVID was even a thing. Jeez. Yeah, before the pandemic ever would have disrupt literally everything. So that's how far how far away that we are from when that game got indefinitely delayed. Well, here's a crazy thought. Could COVID be responsible for Dying Light coming back? It might as well, <laughs> because we were so close to... That could have given them the time and the reasoning behind putting forth more resources into it to get it to come out in a future mm-hmm. year, because that happened to them in an unrelated sense. And they're like, oh, well, guess what? COVID happened anyway. Let's just use the time given to us while no one's expecting anything out of games to actually make the game. And now it's going to come out this year. They might, it might as well. So um, I would say that it was going to behoove them to actually release that game because the first game was so successful. It reviewed super well. It sold really well. It's actually, it proved that January is a good month for you to release something if you had it scheduled in the fall. Yep. Because there has always been this weird mentality that you shouldn't put out games like in this in January or in like the summer month, like June, July, all of that, because people are not going to be interested in buying. Big wrong, because a lot of people are actually hungry to get something new around January because there's always that um, that desire to always get something new. I think it's so funny how in, in the in the game industry. Everyone just always is looking for the new thing all the time, no matter what, even if they haven't finished something before, that that benefited a lot to Dying Light back in 2015. That game like dominated January. And it just proved that a game like Mass Effect 2, which also came out in January back in 2010, wasn't a fluke. And then we have had more proof, like Capcom found great success in releasing games in January also with uh, Monster Hunter World, Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2, like January is a great spot for you to like dominate. I mean, even freaking Kingdom Hearts 3 came out in January. Really does seem like January is an underrated month to drop things because Mm -hmm. you just finished um, your Christmas. Christmas. Mm -hmm. You've got some Christmas money usually. Mm -hmm. Um, And either January or February has always had those games where everyone's like, okay, new year, new me let's see what what's next for the the gaming world and then you get a lot of these games that are pretty good and somehow underrated i think Mm because initially dying light was really underrated they kept dropping more dlc they uh, made like vehicles and races Mm -hmm. a big expansion um, big expansion which i never actually played any of that Mm -hmm. um i played the vanilla game really and um I had it was a pre-order bonus. I mean, say what you will about locking things behind pre-order, but it was a game type where you could play as one of the monsters and hunt other player characters that were doing co-op missions um, in their their world. And you could basically it was almost like an invasion, but like they would go into their own thing, play an instance of go here, get the thing, come back, I believe. And you could spawn in as a monster to hunt them down and get stuff out of it. And um, that was amazing because you had like all of these superpowers and all of them were trying to run like heck away from you. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was amazing. But um, didn't they also release like a battle royale also like in the midst of that craziness? Yeah, Um, that was only like a year or two ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So imagine the game came in 2015 and they still kept sporting it. And ironically, now there also there's going to be a platinum edition of the original game that people will be able to pick up pretty soon that has all wow. of it all together. Hmm. So that game kept chugging along. And it's like one of this generation's most underrated gems, even though like more underrated gems than what people think about it now that we're removed from it. But at the time, it was all about dying light. Yeah. That January 2015. I'll never forget that. So finally, the sequel, which I would also say that the thing I also love most about Dying Light is that it out mirrors Edge, mirrors Edge. Yeah. Yeah, that it, it did. even was a catalyst that came out last. Yes. It doesn't thing because Mirror's Edge started, then they came, uh, then Dying Light took the idea of it and made it better. And then Mirror's Edge Catalyst came out a year after. It wasn't good, unfortunately. And that, that killed that, that killed Mirror's Edge. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it's, um, the, 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 the big stream they made yesterday that was like almost 30 minutes 
that was actually pretty in depth where they showcase like they're adding more terror for the night section because that was already a part of the things and that uh, was a cool idea in itself. Yeah. And they're making it even hard. They, they, they're making it even more terrifying to be at night while it making more of a risk reward area. Right. Giving more incentives for you to no do stuff. Fast at the day. As well. Yeah. I want to point that out to everyone. So yeah. you had to pace out when you thought you were going to go out of your safe space. And if you got caught in the middle of the city at nighttime, it was extremely <laughs> terrifying for a mm-hmm. while until you got like methods to actually stop it. But uh, continue what you were saying. Yeah, and uh, there will be like more interactions with like human camps and all that during the daytime. They mentioned that they were going to add more like 3000 new parkour animations and moves to make parkour even more insane. And we could kind of see it in the video here. And that was one of the best things about it. It felt so good running around that city. Exactly. And and the best part is that it seems that there's even more verticality than there already was there. And, And Dying Light 1 was already pretty vertical. Uh, more improvements to co-op um, and the most important part a release date and a new name yeah dying light to staying human stay stay alive right it's staying human it is a stay, stay it's staying, i thought it was staying alive yeah I, that i gave our friend in our chat they're wrong it's, it's actually dying light to staying human <laughs> really yeah so that is very strange yes yeah, stay human sure enough that's yes significantly um stranger stay human huh? yeah and it's a december release for this year yeah but i will say december this December 7th I think. yeah december 7th 2021 hmm. i don't believe it but it's something like you know, um this is impressing me a lot more with especially the the range of weapons that mm-hmm. you got out here and um that that might be something that i might have to pick up at the end of the year yeah this could be it depending on what the holiday looks like because remember i think we're gonna it's everything intentionally everything is intentionally a drought right now because of the unforeseen COVID delays of the games that were not close to being ready mm-hmm. that it seems that everything is not gonna be clobbered together at the end I, of the year at the end of, at the end of the year i wonder if they put the stake here to kind of get away from all of that but i have learned that many games that are scheduled in december tend to always be pushed just a little bit like uh south park the fractured but whole was a december yeah <laughs> that was a december release that then got pushed almost a year later until like october yeah. um i remember uh, like notable december games are like far cry 3 that came out on december 4th 2012 but that that one actually stayed but there's always kind of that worry that it might just be um it could be pushed, especially in the now that, like I can mention, things are recovering now, like people are getting vaccine and all that. But you always have to keep erring in the side of caution that something may have gone wrong in the work at home environment that may have to push things a little bit. That's Even true. though they're finally, and we are, and we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. But to me, just the fact that we went from an indefinite delay to not hearing anything about this game to get as much as we did in that stream that I, I boiled it down, but there was like a lot of gameplay footage. I would recommend people to go check it out if you're interested to see like not only the end of demos that they were showing, but explaining things. They had the directors and it's some like of some gameplay design. Yeah, they had the gameplay designers there to uh, really explain some of the things, the improvements. So they're feeling pretty confident about the extra work they put into the thing. And I would hope that it makes it out this year because I think that game would have benefited if it had come out around that time last year for like the next gen console launches because uh, everyone buys anything that's at launch to play something in the new machines. So I think that would have benefited for them to get it to get it out then. But at the very least, we know it'll, it'll be out. So, well, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, I wonder if that phrase will be ever like. I was just it, thinking about that. It's, I think that that phrase forever will have been ruined now after the year that we had. <laughs> gonna have a very different connotation. But I will keep saying this because I think we always made a joke that 2019 wasn't a good year. Technically, the name of the virus is called COVID COVID 19. So the garbage of, that happened in 2019 affected a whole year. It was one one whole year, and then another whole year, and now. 
I don't even know what this year is doing, but hey, yeah. this year is just chugging along. It's like, I'm just happy that we haven't had much disasters. Yeah. Other than a few things that we're not going to, ma- we're not going to mention. Yeah, we're, we're not going to mention. Yes. Everything. But it's like compared to things around this time last year, they were pretty catastrophic. So I want to thank everyone big too, for having listened to us. That brings the end of the news section, which was much meatier than the one from the last episode. But it's because we're finally in that Christmas time for us in gaming, Paul. Ooh, yes. Finally, yes. Like Looking forward to seeing all the crazy stuff that's going to be happening. How I'm going to navigate all of that as an adult now. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> because I think we have to kind of figure out if we uh, would. You, wouldn't you mind doing like smaller episodes uh, around like some of like the big events? Just focus on the event. I think that would be kind of cool. Even if we, um, I mean. Throw, we'll we'll bounce it around a little bit more mm-hmm. but the idea of like a live react or mm-hmm. um having a reaction that we post up to youtube Immediate. afterward i would be fine with something like that because yeah. part of the fun is kind of bouncing off of that and being mm-hmm. really like and hitting and hitting right what is hot up jumping yeah. up and screaming and all that stuff and exactly. it's not as fun being that uh doing that on your own so mm-hmm. yeah um I yeah we have am... to figure out how we can do a react that we're putting this out there to everyone it's like as a promise that we'll try to do a react for that we want to do something that's for yeah. sure because we didn't we couldn't quite get to that last year so there's a few things that were kind of stopping us yes but at least we're probably more better equipped this time so yeah that will be kind of a promise and we'll still have a i think we'll still be able to hit an episode right before any of this madness starts i think we have to hit yeah yeah. the madness starts on thursday june 10th then uh the microsoft thing is on sunday and we'll we'll see what else is there around the topic i think we we can hit those two things and whatever sony or nintendo end up doing we could do small ones for those two so we'll figure it out and uh, so yeah you tune in when that happens because we're going to be losing our minds as well Yes. So kind of like as a reminder, this show will always uh, will always strike our regular episodes to always hit a Tuesday unless something special happens that could be additives. Our show will always be available here as a video show on YouTube. And also a reminder that we're still in all the podcast services with the exception of Apple Podcasts. However, there's an RSS feed in the in our anchor.fm page where you can link it and put in whatever podcast of your choice and you'll always get new episodes there as long as you link the RSS feed. And at the very least, most of the, most of the podcast services are hosting us now. So that's pretty cool. So don't forget to follow us, like, or subscribe. And we'll always keep trying to do this show for as long as human as we can and as long as humanly possible. So Paul, uh, where can people find you? As usual at Dork of Art on Twitter and AngelSword21 on Twitch. Um, I, I wonder if I should even bother mentioning my Twitch because that's been so difficult to mention sometimes, yes. <laughs> um, to actually add things to it, especially with how it will get rid of my stream. I have plans to restarting streaming once I'm done being at my undisclosed location after I'm fully vaccinated. So I'll, I'll keep plugging it in my Twitch is twitch.tv slash the Slayer Giant. Uh, my Twitter is a underscore drosegobia. And my website where I can sometimes, I sometimes review stuff of interest. It's thecriticalcorner.com, which is always going to be something that will be hosted by our main channel, this Escape Media. And we'll see what else we can come up with because we should have maybe some fun guests in the future. Who knows? But until next time, Paul, it was, it's been a pleasure always getting to chat this stuff with you. Same with you. Enjoy your Memorial Day. And well. till next time. Press X to play. Bye-bye.